As a scientist, do you see any relationship between religion and science? What is your stand on the existence of a supreme being? Well, I'm quite heavily involved in this question, um, as some of you might know, and um, I take a stand, quite a, a rigid stand on it. Um, and people like Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris, um, Daniel Dennett and others who uh, are well known for speaking out about science, um, uh, friends of mine. Um, I'll say, I said it before, but I'll say it again to this question. Science is an arid term. It really is. It doesn't, it's not understood. Uh, some people think it's, um, you know, science is just all this technology around it. But no, it's something much deeper than that. Science and scientific thinking, scientific method, is for me the only philosophical construct that the human race has developed uh, um, to determine what is reliably true. And what can be true and what is patently cannot be true. And it depends on evidence, it depends on questioning and doubting. Now religion depends on just the opposite, it depends on no doubt and it depends on belief. And in fact, um, uh, Abelard said, um, a famous religious philosopher, by doubting we come to question and by questioning we arrive at truth. Now, as everything that we do in science depends on evidence, what does it mean? It means, um, well, for instance, I have a four out of five rule, which is um, if you have a theory, and by that you might some people say a hypothesis um, that about something, then uh, you make an observation. Um, we'll really um, think of three or four or five other questions that need to be answered if you to ensure that your hypothesis is correct. If four out of five of your experiments work, then you're almost, and I say almost certainly, right. If only one out of five fit, you're almost, and I stress almost certainly, wrong. And that was the case for C60. Basically, we did several experiments after we conjectured that it was a soccer ball, and four out of five, or almost five out of five, all fitted. For instance, 70 had to be the second magic number, which it was. Um, you could put something on the inside so it's a cage. Um, Rick and Bob found that as you made the cage smaller, you could put, um, also, you, had, you could only put smaller and smaller atoms. And there were lots of little pointers to indicate that, that we were correct and we were fundamentally uh, proven to be so um, in 1990 by Kretschmer and Huffman. Now, I believe, and I say there is a conflict between science and religion. There are some scientists uh, who say that that's not the case, there's no conflict. Well, there is, there may not be a conflict in their mind, but there definitely is a conflict in mine because it's an ethical issue. It's how do I, how do I convince you um, that C60, that this thing we have has 60 carbon atoms? Well, the mass is 720. That's the evidence. Uh, now you go to a reader, how can I convince you that uh, religion is right? And what's the evidence? Well, there's no evidence whatsoever. And what's more, which god are we talking about? Are you talking of the god of the Hindus or the gods of the Shintos in Japan or the god of or the supreme being of the Seminoles or the um, the rain serpent or the great spirit of the Aborigines of Australia or the gods of the Aztecs or the numerous other mystical gods of the Greeks um, and I don't think there's any evidence for this that doesn't mean that religion isn't important it's important to a lot of people but I'm not going to discuss that there is a conflict in my mind because I need evidence for truth and if you need evidence for truth, religion doesn't have any. It just has belief. 
Now you could say, uh, I say I'm an atheist, um, and then some people say, well you can't be an atheist, you're a scientist, you have to be an agnostic. Well, uh, okay, but what are you agnostic about? I mean, you know, okay, I, I, so I say, okay, I'm, I'm an agnostic, and what does that mean? It means that you can't prove, you can't, um, uh, there's no proof that there isn't a God. Well, all right, fair enough, but what do you mean by God? What is this concept of the God that you're talking about? And I can't think of, I don't, I've no, no one's ever come up to me and given me a concept of a God um, to be agnostic about. So if you say you're agnostic, well, what are you agnostic about? And then you, the whole thing falls into things that don't make sense. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, and things have to make sense. I'm a scientist. Now, it turns out that 92% um, of fellows of the Royal Society are right, atheists, free thinkers, agnostics. Um, less than 10% are claim to be religious. So when we talk about scientists, let's talk about scientists and cut off because they're you know they're good baseball players and good basketball. I'm a tennis player. I mean not not as good as I was. Um, so let's talk about good scientists by some standard. And let's say fellows of the Royal Society, uh, members of the National Academy of Science in the USA, Nobel laureates. Nine out of ten Nobel laureates are atheist, agnostic, free thinkers. 92% of fellows of the Royal Society are atheist, agnostic, free thinkers, and 92% of fellow members of the National Academy of Sciences are the same. So here we have this problem. There's this group of people, the scientists, the top scientists. 92% of them do not believe in a mystical creator. Now there's a problem because Congress in the USA apparently 99% of them claim to be religious. Now here's this group of people, the scientific community, who by and large have transformed the world. And they believe something quite different from the average, from a lot of people. And that's where the conflict lies. Now there are some scientists who do believe in God, that God, um, but they're a very small number of good scientists. I mean, um, it's less than 10%. So if we're talking about statistics, and I think that's the case, and there, it's a very small number. And I don't know very many scientists, actually. I personally know very few scientists who, I mean, they do know some. Now, that doesn't mean I don't, I'm not aware of the value of religion to individual people on a personal level, but the conflict is a serious one in the ethical sense because if you accept as I do my contention that science is fundamentally this basically pared down level about how we determine what is true then you see there's an ethical issue in teaching in schools and an ethical issue in politics and everything else now, for those scientists who are religious, and I say very few good scientists, um, whatever that means, but I cut off with them, I think they have to have some sort of um, intellectual schizophrenia where they cut off here, this is where evidence based, and here is where, what I believe, and I accept this. But the interesting thing is that, by and large, not all, but by and large, these people believe in the God they were brought up in. Well, they just happen to be brought up in this religion or that religion. And uh, there's an irrationality which doesn't make sense. And uh, for, for many people, it's not very nice to believe that there is no God, there's no afterlife, there's no mystical creator, there's no supreme being, whatever that means. After all, you know, what is a supreme being? I mean, you know, I can't even define it. So I can't be agnostic about a supreme being that I've no idea how to define. I just haven't a clue. No, no, nothing you can say can make sense on this issue. And so I'm quite comfortable with this. Um, obviously, I, who's happy about dying? Not many people are. And uh, as you get older, you, you, it becomes a lot closer. Um, of course, it'd be nice to feel that I could, um, you know, still be around looking down and seeing how the kids were doing, but um, I don't see any evidence that that's the case. And, you know, I don't understand it, really, because here's this massive 
business, of religion and churches and mosques, all um, all based on a reward. You know that you know give us make, make big business, huge business, huge capital, huge assets. People pay money, and um, they've been promised a reward. Where there's and there's no evidence that uh, anyone's ever got it. I mean, I sometimes say, you know, um, I visited Bernie Madoff in, in, you know, no, I didn't really, but this is, I went to see Bernie and, um, and I asked him, you know, what did you do, do wrong? And Bernie said, you know, Harry, I, I was stupid. I promised payback in this life. 